uh, sacroiliac disease um, is referred to as sacroiliitis. Um, sacroiliitis is named this way because the sacrum or tailbone and the ilium, which is part of your pelvis, join together at the bottom of the spine to form the sacroiliac joint. Um, that joint can be inflamed and irritated for a number of different reasons. Some people might have uh, thought that there was one more step and they uh, step heavily on the ground or that they're, um, uh, they thought they were done with the steps and there's another one and they land heavy on one leg. They may step in a hole and jam their, their hip uh, upwards. Um, in a pregnant woman whose body is filled with uh, uh, hormones which allows her ligaments to relax so that she can have a baby, those same hormones allow that pelvis to deform and to uh, uh, get out of normal position and if that uh, hormone goes away after the baby is born and that pelvis is out of position, then that joint, that sacroiliac joint, can be in an odd position and be irritated just by moving around and walking. Um, so people who have irritation of this sacroiliac joint are, um, are people who uh, you would consider after um, a conservative regimen for a sacroiliac joint fusion. About one in five people who have complaints of back pain have sacroiliitis. The procedure that I do for sacroiliitis comes after a lot of conservative therapy. Um, I send people to a osteopath or chiropractor for manipulation to make sure that their sacroiliac joint is aligned properly. Uh, I make sure that they've had anti-inflammatory medicines and uh, pain medicine and muscle relaxants, that they've had um, um, appropriate uh, workup, including an uh, injection placed in that uh, sacroiliac joint to see if it relieves them of pain either temporarily or long term. Um, some of those patients will go on to have a um, sacroiliac joint ablation. Ablation means burning of the small sensation nerves that tell the body it hurts here. Um, oftentimes, if you've had success with a sacroiliac joint steroid injection, um, but it's only lasted a few weeks to a month, an ablation can give you much longer relief, six months, a year of relief. In the patients who have failed all of these things, have failed to work up looking for infection or um, rheumatoid disease, um, uh, in that case, and that patient has gotten better with each thing but only temporarily, that's a person who we would consider a sacroiliac joint fusion in. A sacroiliac joint fusion is done, again, uh, through a minimally invasive approach. Um, I make a small incision right on the side of the uh, buttock above the hip. Um, with a blunt um, uh, tool, I pass directly against the bone of the ilium. The ilium, if you'll remember, is one half of that sacroiliac joint, part of the pelvis. And I line it up under x-ray to make sure that the other side of that ilium is uh, right where that joint is. I'll pass uh, a wire, um, much like a knitting needle, um, through the bone and into the sacrum in a safe path that I've identified by um, uh, x-ray. Once that is into the sacrum, I can then use dilation tubes to again split the muscle without uh, de uh, um, without taking its blood supply away. Uh, and. Um, through that working uh, opening, I then take and uh, create a path uh, with a drill along the area where that, um, that um, wire is. And then over that wire, I take a, a large um, bolt, if you will, uh, a screw, uh, um, and um, screw it from one side to the other so that that um, ilium and sacrum are now tied together. Um, in that space uh, where the wire was, I pack bone, uh, bone that I retrieve from creating the hole in the first place, uh, and that helps in forming uh, fusion through that space. Um, I do that three times. 
Uh, and so um, um, you could imagine a single screw would allow for a lot of motion around that axis. By putting two in, you significantly reduce that um, rotation, and by putting three in, it's uh, locked very nicely and tightly. Uh, Postoperatively with a sacroiliac joint fusion, I take um, and put them on crutches um, for about two weeks. Um, I allow them to touch their foot to the ground, but not transfer the weight to the ground to the to the uh, leg and foot. Uh, I do this just to allow that fusion to begin healing on its own before we start to stress that area. Uh, your whole body goes through that space when you stand on your, on your two feet. Um, and so it's important to allow that to begin to heal and to fuse uh, before we start to do that. Um, once those two weeks are over, I'll have people gradually increase their ambulation, their walking, uh, by um, uh, moving from the uh, crutches or walker, whichever they prefer, uh, to uh, walking short distances. Um, I always encourage people to, to uh, actively engage in walking, however, uh, to do so within the uh, distance that they can do with relatively little pain. I'm not asking them to increase their pain by doing a mile of walking or, or walking around the mall. Um, I want them to walk, I want them to walk frequently, uh, but at first, more like to the bathroom, to the kitchen, to the living room type of walks. And as those become easy, stretching it out from one, house, one side of the house to the other, or around the outside of the house, or down to the mailbox.